And we're back! Holy cow, this is uh, this is kind of a long process that I've been trying to show you guys some of these things, but this is number three. Or three. This is video three of how to take apart a porcupine, how to clean a porcupine, how to basically get the things that you need from a porcupine to get the artwork done that you want to get done. If you're just jumping into this video now and you want to see part one, which was taking off the hair, or part two, which was taking off all the fur, this is part three, so you can go back to those videos and check them all out and see uh, which one you want to do. It could either be this one or it could either be this one. So you can choose which one you want. If this is the third video for you guys, thanks for hanging around and watching this whole process. I don't have very much time and I need to get this guy out of my house. <laughs> It doesn't stink, but I can smell it. How I do this, yes, I understand there are going to be different people that are going to have different ways of doing this, but this is the way I like doing it. It's most efficient for me, um, especially in the long run. If you do more work on the porcupine while it's whole, it's l much, much less work later on when you have the quills and everything separated. Around the side of the head, up here in the front, you aren't going to have, be getting as many of the quills as you want because they're going to be very, very small. So right at the back of the base of the neck is where I start to pluck and then I make my way. Let me show you the important sections of this porcupine and where the quills are for the different types of quill work that are out there. I'll show you the, the quill work for me. I'll show you the quill work for the quill wrappers. I'll show you the quill work for the quill embroidery people. I'll show you the quill wrapping for the jewelry makers. Hi, right, here it is. So we have the entire porcupine. Don't mind the wrist of having a little bit of problems with the wrist. So I'm gonna start right behind the head from the side of the legs right here along each side. So here's his leg right here. Okay. And along the side of his obliques and along here are the quills that I want. That's me. So this V is for birch bark quill work. As we start to move up here and they get a little bit longer and they're skinny, this is primarily for the uh, quill wrappers. That's for these guys right there. Okay. And then as we keep going, this section here, these longer semi thicker ones, and along the base right here, a lot of the actual embroidery guys like those uh, longer and a little bit thicker sometimes for those ones. And then your jewelry makers are going to be these thick ones right here because they're able to put a needle through there and tack it down or have it made for jewelry to hang from different earrings or put beads through them and whatnot. So I'm gonna continue to keep working in the same spot right here behind the head and I'm gonna make my way going this way because the quills are pointing in this direction. So I wanna make sure that I push the quills forward, grab a little bit here, boom, and you got some quills. Pinch and pull. Now these quills I can't necessarily use because they're gonna be so short. So I'm just gonna put them off to the side and I'm gonna keep working right here to make a patch and you'll see what it looks like. As you can see, I have this little patch going on right here and that's exactly how you wanna start so you can slowly start making your way through. Now, because all the quills go in one direction, you don't really have to worry too much about getting poked as long as you get all the quills along in the patch, even the little tiny brand new ones that you're gonna see that are still just growing. Now it is kind of a process to get going, but that's the longest part is just making that patch and then you're just gonna start getting into the better, longer quills that can be used.
I don't know the angle of it. I just kind of don't like it. It makes your wrists kind of sore. Yeah, so what's up guys? What are you guys doing? Ask me some questions. Keep me occupied. My my camera's filming right now, so I'm doing a time lapse for my YouTube channel. And uh Yeah, I'm doing a time lapse for my YouTube channel, so I just need some company. Um yes, Matt, I use Rit Dye and I use American Kool-Aid. I mean, it's crazy what Kool-Aid can stain. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of, you know, it's stuff I use. And then Andrea asked, thanks for your, yeah, cool. Thank you for hanging out. But uh, I think I just might sell this entire porcupine. Like, I'm just not super satisfied with the quills. So I might just go, hey guys, what is up? Sell them all. Sell them all. Some good old homegrown Montana porcupine. So is it Matt or is it Chris Ann that is actually on there? Cause I never really understood joint Facebooks. Um, Cause then you never really know who's on there. <laughs> you, you don't know if you're like, hey Matt, what's up? Or if you say, hey Chris Ann, what's going on? Like, I mean, figured if you guys are both have the same last name, Claire, which actually I know a couple Claire's. Oh, it's Matt. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so, as you guys noticed, if you guys watched the previous videos, I told you about the larger quills that are in the back here, the guard quills. Now, I have just been using a pair of pliers here, and I like the ones that have that little bit of that, uh, what's that called? Uh, elastic -y stuff. <laughs> Can't even think of it. Okay, I've been using these kind of quills. <clears throat> I've just been using these kind of pliers here. That way it could just be in and out. Let's, oh. Let's try that again. I've just been. been <laughs> I'm gonna do this, guys. I'm gonna get this. I've just been using these kind of pliers here, guys, and that way I can get into these quills. And like I mentioned in the previous videos, that I don't have to necessarily take all the fur off of this because once I reach in here and grab and pull, only a little bit of the actual fur comes out and most of it is quills. And that's where I've been saving them in this bucket here. These are just the large guard quills only, right here. And that's for all you crazy jewelry makers that make all the earrings that where you put a needle through them and you can tie beads on them and do all the crazy things with them. That's for you guys. So I will be uh, probably selling those or giving them away to some place at some point in my life. Now, there was a section here from here to here that the camera actually stopped recording and that kind of sucks, but the time lapse was what it was. And I'm gonna show you guys here a little bit of closer up. As you get closer to the sides of the actual porcupine, the quills get really tiny. They get real thin and those aren't quills that we can use, especially with birch bark quill work. They're just too thin and it just, they, they just break. So normally I won't go into that area and take those quills, but I'll take the ones that I really do need and then the rest of them 
are all right here in this bucket. You're looking at about maybe four to five ounces of quills and they're all different kind of sizes all the way through. So let's get a little closer look on this one. I got 10% left on my foam guys. All right, so I still have a little bit more work to do on this to get the mass amount of quills that are usable for all the different kind of jewelry makers or art makers that are out there. And it's gonna take me probably like another 45 minutes or so. Um, there are areas of the porcupine I don't pluck because I can't use them. Now, for the people that are asking if I would eat this porcupine, this one specifically no because when i got him i didn't gut him um and at the same time he's been going in and out of the house so each video he's been coming in you know getting the work done thawing out going back outside freezing coming in going out so this has been about a week-long process of doing all these videos and i really appreciate you guys watching along but this is kind of the steps that are needed to acquire porcupine quills and porcupine hair and porcupine fur. So if you guys kind of like these tutorials, I mean, I'm gonna make as many as I possibly can and try and just show you guys anything that I know. If you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to like it. If you do like it, I could use a thumbs up because it always looks really good. And um, I'm gonna leave the Facebook Live people to tell you what you should do. Tell them, tell them guys, tell them. Yeah, right there. All 20 of you like. All my 21 friends. Just keep commenting like, keep commenting like, 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 like. You guys are gonna be the closing to my YouTube channel. And y'all need to Keep going guys, keep going guys, keep saying comment. Over, comment, 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 comment. Comment, keep saying comment. More people, come on you guys, keep doing it. I need as much footage as possible, the words comment. And remember,
it is. Keep doing it. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Keep saying it. That's it guys. Like I mentioned, like, subscribe, comment, and uh, make good choices. It is. Keep doing it guys, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Keep writing it, write subscribe. There it is, keep going. There it is. Keep going. Subscribe. Subscribe. Done. And like they said, like. Ugh. And like they said, like, comment, subscribe, and make good choices. That's just how it is. All right, guys. Until the next one.